Hello and welcome, and I just locked my cat in my office room here while I taped this. It's This Is Going Well, I think. He's probably hungry. With David Cooper, and I'm your host, David Cooper. I should probably let him out. I'm going to do that in a moment. This is the only show where no one's listening, no one cares, and where every episode's the last episode. Today, our guest, straight out of England, Tony Five. He's here to tell us about a conversation he allegedly had with a listener of this show. Color me intrigued. Let's dive in with our one half British, one half off his rocker, and all halves delightful friend. And I think my cat probably wants dinner right now. Change your location. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm taking this professionally, bruv. How's it going? Good, bruv. Nah. Yeah, you may find me looking elsewhere because I've set myself up with a little radio studio, David. So uh, you're on a big screen now. I can see all of your hairy face. And uh, and I've got the laptop in front of me. Play the fucking theme tune, David. Okay. And now, and now, live from, London, from England, London, England, London, London, England, it's foreign, it's correspondent, it's foreign correspondent Tony Five. Tony Five. Tony Five. Tony Five. Tony Five. <laughs> Nice to see you rocking out, Tony. I know, right? Fuck me. It's, it's been a good day, David. It's been a good week, actually. Everything's going well. Um, in a minute, when uh, we speak, I'll talk to you about uh, a little bit of an email I've had in from one of the postcards. It's like uh, I feel like Tom Hanks on the island with the ball called Dave. I have um, sent out my seed to the world, and my seed has been taken. And that seed has come back to me, snowboarding, I guess you'd call it, and they've replied to me, and it's been beautiful, the emails I've got and the correspondence I've had. Um, So, yeah, I I wanted to talk about, but first of all, David, as the narcissist you are, tell me about you. I mean, not a whole lot's going on. I am going to go to Canada for two nights, I think, Friday and Saturday night, maybe, or Saturday and Sunday night. I got a dinner I got to attend. Okay, sounds fun. I've got to attend. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Who's that? Family or friends or Yeah, my I had a best friend growing up. Oh yeah. His name's Jordan. Jordan, nice. And we were friends when I was ten or eleven. Okay. Good times. Maybe even younger, nine. And in the schoolyard we he kinda took care of me. I, I transferred oh. to a new school when I was in third grade and he took me under his wing. Fast forward a few years, my parents and his parents, as parents of young children are wont to do, became friends. Yeah. So now we fast forward 30 years into the future. Yeah. He's got some siblings. I got some siblings. They want to throw a big dinner. And I tried to get out of it, but my friend's like, you have to come. It's in our honor. It's in your and my honor. If it wasn't for you and me as friends, there would be no dinner. And so my mother's hosting it, and I promised them I would go. And that sounds annoying, doesn't it? Right. I read that whole story really wrong. I thought you were going to say he was dead. Yeah, he died, sadly. No, he's alive. Not sadly. Okay, right. All right. So I'm not that bothered about that story. I I thought you were going to say he was dead and you were going to pay your respects and maybe give a moving eulogy. Basically, you're annoyed that you have to go back home, have lots of food to a party. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I got to book a flight. I got to rent a car. It's expensive. I want to be in New York. I traveled so much over july august and early in september i was ready to not travel for an, a year and that i mean it is only an hour flight it's very close but still fuck you're a miserable fucker aren't you shit i know i'm a miserable fucker how are you more importantly the thing you referred to with grandiosity was a listener sent you not me you a lovely email so i forwarded the email to you and then i spoke to him which was lovely i did invite him uh, to come on a show. What do you mean? You called this listener on the phone? Yeah, 
I asked him for his uh, number because he's in London. I found it so fascinating that somebody in South London listens to this show. And I wanted to know how on earth he had found it. I just was so curious. So he didn't want to come on the show. So we're going to protect his anonymity by calling his name Dave. Uh, his name's Andrew. But what I wanted to talk, it was amazing. So I asked for his number. He We called up and we had a chat. He's in South London, not too far. <laughs> And he's a bit of an older guy, which is nice. And he's a, a Vietnam veteran, which was really nice. Wow, he went to Nam. Yeah, he was in Nam. Wait, did the UK go to Nam or he's dual citizen? Let me tell you the story, David. Stop interrupting the fucking story. Fine. I mean, I'm, I'm insanely curious. We have one listener. Right. So he's Canadian. Um, uh, I think he trained to be a Mountie at some stage. And he was married to another Canadian. Okay. Um, but her parents were from England, so he went to, um, he served in America, because I think half of, like, half his family were American and half his family were, were Canadian, served in Nam, married this woman, and ended up in London, but still loves Canadian radio, he hates like the UK-based radio, so listens to it online on his little computer, and listened to Bell Media, so your, your show, and was a huge fan of yours. Oh! Um, he said he was devastated when he found out that you weren't getting paid and that you left, like, really unceremoniously. No, I was getting paid by Bell. Oh, well, he, I, I told him to feel sorry for you, and I said that you weren't getting paid. But anyway, stop <laughs> saying that. Bell actually was paying me okay. It's just since then, there's no money. Oh, right. Okay, he was under the assumption you got fired because you weren't getting paid. But I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, he said he listened to you religiously, loved your humor, loved you. Uh, not in a gay way. Uh, normal heterosexual way. I mean... I would prefer if it were in a gay way. That would speak to my ego a little more. I did tell him that. And um, one or two nights, he had like sort of PTSD Vietnam flashbacks and you helped him through it. What do you mean? I don't know. Apparently he heard like shells firing and so on. And um, he was listening to you one night and your dulcet tones uh, soothed his uh, war-torn memories. And uh, ever since then, he's been a huge fan. Oh. And he's heard me. That's so sweet. And um, basically, he uh, he's a massive fan. And then obviously, he heard the show. He's happy that I'm back and some of your other guests. And um, basically, yeah, he's a big fan. He got my postcard. He was really moved by it. This is so sweet. He was going through a tough time and he heard our show. And whether it was serious or funny or whatever it was, it, it distracted him or provided comfort when he needed it. Absolutely. And he was he was sort of tearful. And he said that he really likes the show. He's happy and he sort of supports the podcast. And he's like... You know, he's wearing his heart on his sleeve and he's a flag waving supporter. And um, yeah, he wanted to reach out and it was really sweet. And yeah. This is very touching. Uh, I appreciate this so much. You don't need to touch yourself when you say touching, David. I am. I just happen to be touching myself. It's unrelated to this, but still. But yeah, we might meet up and, and go to a Tim Hortons for fun. I told you there's a Tim Hortons in England. Yeah. So uh, we might have a breakfast date and have a Tim Hortons. Look at that. I have my first listener. You have your first friend. It's all coming together. Correct. And I have my first Canadian maple syrup pancake thing and a heart attack. David, I cannot wait. And I mean, we are... Uh, I mean, it'll be fun, yeah. He doesn't live far, and we spoke, and got my number and WhatsApp. So, yeah, it was good fun. Nice guy. Look at that. I Speaking of seeing you, which was not a topic that was brought up, but I'm sure it was on your mind. My brother is 99% coming to Thanksgiving. I know. <laughs> it'll be fun. He told you? Yeah, he told me. I texted him. I put the guilt on him. Jesus. Every you're, t you're, you're calling this listener who emails you and not me. You're texting my brother. You, you talked to Miranda, you know, you told her you were coming for Thanksgiving. Everybody knows what's going on in my life but me. Do you remember that friend you were telling me about that you're going to Canada with? Jordan. I'm going to be there as well. Yeah, Jordan. Me and Jordan are fucking tight as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's one of those friends. I love him to death. Like, if I got married, he'd be in my wedding party. If he needed anything, I would be there. Was he in the previous wedding party? No, nobody was. I eloped, right? <laughs> The idea was don't invite anybody because you, if you invite one person, they'll feel But You know what I mean? So I invited no one I knew. Just a few new friends I had made in San Francisco. I'd only been living in San Francisco for, what, three months when I got married? So it was just like people I barely knew who I just met. You know, when you move to a place, you make new friends quickly, but they're pretty superficial friends. Two of them have stayed in my life. One, I can't stand. But uh, it was three, three people came. But um, I would, anyway, back to this Jordan thing. 
he aggravates me to no end. And I think I aggravate him to no end. Like we hate each other. But do you have any friends like that where you've known them so long? It's like you're the odd married couple. You can't get rid of them. If I had met this guy today, I don't know if we would hit it off. We would just argue and not be friends. But I love him to death, but I cannot stand him. Do you have any friends like that? Are you taking a piss? I'm talking to him now. What? I'm talking to you. You all fucking irritate me constantly, and I can't get rid of you. Oh, my God. I thought you were talking to Jordan. I was so confused. Because <laughs> you said you were talking to Jordan. Jesus. No, I'm talking to you, Bellend. I irritate you to no end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you irritate me to no end. What do I do? What it, what irritates you? Kind of bug me too. You're. I mean, where do I start? It's your voice, your look. Jews, you don't like Jews. Not really. Um, your hair, the fact that you don't wash. Um, I don't wash, <laughs> but I will wash for you. That sort of Beatles jacket in the background really freaks me out. That annoys me to hell. Um, I don't know. There's lots of things. Uh, those are my costumes, dude. I don't wear them on the regular. I, I know, but, but the fact that you're a grown adult saying those are my costumes, that annoys me as well. Okay. But apart from that, I love you to bits. I think it's great. So you saw it three weeks, isn't it? Three weeks and two days, if I'm not mistaken. 23rd? Yeah, the 23rd. Three weeks and two days. My brother, I think he booked the flight. He's just trying to figure out whether he's staying with me or in a hotel. He wanted to know you were staying, but I'm like, if New York is here and Baghdad is there, you're closer to Baghdad than you are to me. Correct. You're staying deep in Queens. I don't... Is it re It's not that deep. Is it deep? I mean, there is deeper in Queens, but you're pretty deep, dude. I mean, it's safe though, isn't it? I'm not going to get stabbed, am I? Shot. Not shot. It looks safe. I mean, yeah. I mean, all of New York's safe, dude. There are parts of London that are just as bad as New York. I don't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about it. I'm a big boy. Where's the, like, crappiest place in, like, New York? Is it Brooklyn? I mean, there's parts of Brooklyn that are bad. There's parts of the Bronx that are really bad. But that's pretty far from here. Bronx, that's right. Bed-Stuy. I mean, I have a lot of friends in Bed-Stuy because it's cheap and cool, but it is rough. Okay, David, we know you've got black friends. You don't need to keep going on about it. No, they're not. They're white gentrifiers, Tony. <laughs> Brilliant. When I act like I have tons of black friends to people, I'm just posturing. You are the only one. But you are also my only friend. So my friends are majority black. Correct. Only friends. Good website. So, yeah, apart from that, what else have you been up to then? So uh, we're having Duck. I know that. I know some of the listeners are, are curious. They're all... I mean, he was so excited, this Andrew guy, about me going to see you for Thanksgiving. And he thinks I'm going to have a good time and stuff. He was a really, really sweet guy. We can FaceTime him if he wants. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he doesn't. He, he he wants to remain anonymous, a little anonymous, to the point where you're calling him Dave and not Andrew. Correct. Yeah, that's not his real name. You've told everybody about his life. Is he going to be mad about that? No, because you don't know who he is. How many people were in Vietnam? At least seven. Exactly, and he could be the eighth or the sixth. Nobody knows, David. Nobody knows. What have I been up to? I am. I haven't really talked about it a lot on the show. But I'm in the process of getting new housing, so I'm just deep in that, yeah. <gasps> Have you found a place? We found a place. We're going to move further downtown, a little bit quieter where we're moving. And yeah, we haven't gotten it yet. We're just in the kind of stage of trying to get it. In New York, everything's difficult, so we won't know until Monday or Tuesday. But I'm just in the thick of that. That's providing a very large distraction. Okay, speaking of New York, how did you, or were you affected, or how did you feel about uh, Matthew Perry passing? Oh, friends. Yeah. I don't give a, I mean, it's sad, I guess. He's a guy who died. That's always sad. But I didn't watch Friends. I didn't care for him. He was kind of an interesting guy. He talked a lot about addiction. I only came to understand this after he died. So his off-camera persona, where he was, as I understand it, I'm not a fan. This is just from reading things. Wore his kind of life, his experiences, his troubles with addiction on his sleeve. I got to respect that. Um, but beyond that, I don't really care. I mean, I, it's not that I don't care. I, it's sad. But it. It's no more sad than any other celebrity I, I'm not that engaged with dying. Okay. I am. Um, I grew up with, I'm a bit older than you, obviously, and I grew up watching Friends religi religiously when it was coming out every week. So this is before streaming, and it would be like your water cooler moments. I'm around that age. I just didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. And so I was I was quite affected. It was kind of like the work, the first um, friend who kind of passed away. Obviously, he's the first one of the group. And um, it was a massive shock. And I probably affected me more than I thought it would. Because, um, yeah, you're right. He was very open about his, addi his addictions to drink drugs. But he was also mentioning that you can watch each series of Friends and kind of work out where he was on the addiction scale. Because his hair would grow out. He'd be putting on loads of weight. He'd lost loads of weight. He was redder than most. And 
when you went back so because obviously in the uk they're just playing it 24 7 now and you can it's something that i probably never noticed before and it was um it was absolutely fascinating okay so i found that i found that really quite sad that was quite a big thing and obviously the big thing the same things at the moment is the palestine uh, conflict and the, the Gaza conflict, which I'm understanding more and more, and also um, finding more and more distressing with the amount of people that are getting affected by it. Um, I find it strange in the UK that there's literally nothing in the news about Ukraine, but obviously that's still going on. I think they haven't taken a break, have they? So No, they didn't see that, uh, <laughs> that Hamas uh, committed an act of terror in Israel, and now Israel is completely invading and decimating Gaza. The Russians didn't look at that. And then say, oh, hey, well, maybe we'll leave Ukraine alone so the West can play something else on the news. They, they should have, but they didn't. Yeah, they didn't say, let's go on holiday. Let, let them do that. Let them do the killing for a little while. We'll come back in a new year, new and improved, and start killing again. No? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a mess. Oh, yeah. And, you know, where else has been getting me down the weather? It's like, really, the 1st of November, and it's become moody and rainy, and there's storms coming. And, yeah, I guess it's just this time of year. Even though, um, historically, this is my favourite time of the year, David. Like, Halloween is kind of fun, but even though I don't do anything. Did you dress up? Um, yeah, just as a black man with a hat on. <laughs> so I did well. And then I... Um, and and fireworks night oh, amazing can't wait that's this weekend i'm going away for fireworks yeah but you're so superstitious around that i know you're always like if i have a bad fireworks night i'm gonna have a bad year yeah you remember that but it's in your control as to whether you have a good or bad fireworks night oh uh, that's just my weird stuff going on yeah if i have a crap time then i feel like it's gonna be like a crap well not thanksgiving because i never celebrated it but to be fair my my halloween's been great my fireworks is going to be great then the next one is thanksgiving with you which is going to be amazing going to be fantastic and then i've got obviously christmas i'm going to be away and then new year i haven't even planned yet but i am thinking about it so yeah i wish you all the best i'm looking forward to that there's a couple of things i've booked for new york i'm, I'm going to go and see the world trade center why don't we go see a show that'd be great yeah that'd be fun that'd be nice yeah you let me know what's on if it's something that I've seen a lot in the UK, so anything that's there that's kind of fun or funny or kind of cool. Have you seen Hades Town? No, no, never heard of it. It's pretty good. Okay, uh, wouldn't mind going to some of these like stand-up clubs that you know about. I don't know if you know any cool. Yeah, they're all near where I live, like Greenwich Village. That would be pretty nice to do um, to go and see, and to that would be fun. Um, I'm going to a museum somewhere. I can't remember where it is, but I'm, I've booked to do that. Um, and then, yeah, I just wanted a couple of days where I can just kind of walk around and chill out and stuff. Will it be really cold there at the moment? Is it cold? Yeah, it'll be fucking freezing. It was cold today. It was like 45 degrees Fahrenheit or something. You reckon it's going to snow? No, definitely not. Not in November. No way. No how. Okay, cool. But just very cold, but bitterly cold, yeah? Yeah. Do you do Celsius or Fahrenheit? I forget. Celsius. Yeah, it'll be like 8, 7... 12 like that kind of thing it's not going to be minus five yeah oh that's not cold that's what it is here oh it's not going to be zero no 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 no, no. oh that's fine and oh god that's not cold that's t-shirt weather for me fuck that yeah yeah it'll be chilly but it's not going to be freezing bring a jacket but don't bring a parka i guess is what i'm trying to say don't bring peter parker who's that parka a spider-man a fucking parka you drive me insane <laughs> anyway i think this was a good show today david what do you think it was a show I mean, uh, I think that's it, really. We don't do a lot, do we? I mean, it's pretty busy. That's it? That's everything you want to do? You want to talk about one guy who you had a phone call with, and then that's the show? Can I tell you something about that guy? Sure. I completely made all that up. He wasn't a Vietnam vet. <laughs> no. It was absolute bullshit. Basically, the guy, I think he pressed the button, was in Canada one day, heard the radio, didn't know how to turn off the radio, heard you, and has basically got very little taste. Yeah, he can't get rid of the radio. <laughs> <laughs> just listen to the show it's bolted to the floor and he has no idea how to turn it off absolutely tragic sad i sent him a postcard he was ecstatic sent an email job done never spoke to him i'm not gonna call up some fucking weirdo in london um so yeah i promised our listenership of between one and more than one that i would cross-reference the people you sent postcards to with the people that sent us our addresses because i'm certain there's a few you missed i'm gonna do that today i haven't done that yet Okay, but I've sent you a note, an upgraded note with all the names, right? So you should be able to see that. Yeah, but I had to log into my Apple account to open the note. What the fuck? Oh, fuck's sake. But does, did, did you? No, I don't use the Apple account. My phone's always bugging me about it. Oh, fuck's Because I don't like to sign into anything, and it's always like, you need to sign into fuck cloud. Why? I don't, I don't know. It's, I got too many accounts, Tony. You're such a conspiracy theorist. Jesus. Just sign in. Tony! Huh, 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 huh.
I got to send that to you. It's a Seinfeld thing. Okay, well, I'll have a look. In fact, I'm going to play that for you right now. Tony. Yeah. Hey. Right. Okay. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Hey. That's nice. Hey. Listen, listen to this. Hunky. Tony. Hey. Okay. Tony. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, uh, that's, uh. Yeah, that's it's not that good, but. I think it reminds me of when I had sex last. Oh. Yeah. David. Okay, fine. We can end the episode. <laughs> David, it's been epic. Um, for all those Vietnam veterans who are listening and suffer from PTSD, please, uh, there's a sort of note. I wasn't taking a piss out of you. I was just taking a piss out of David. Thank you very much and good night.